The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. And I hope we all appreciate what Basil just went through for an hour because I know what that's like when you have to talk with a hoarse voice. It's not easy. <laughs> anyway, he's a real trooper and, and certainly a professional with great information. All right, um, I put a trade of the year out uh, this week, and it was to sell the S&P yesterday. Um, my stop on that trade is 1507. I'm giving it a 20-point a, a stop because it's a, a pretty volatile market. And we're right over these uh, pretty major cycles that, that started uh, last week on the 14th. And, of course, the big one was uh, yesterday, the 22nd. And then we also have to look at the uh, all the way through the end of this week because we have the uh, the full moon coming in on Friday. So there will be some pretty good activity. It would be hard for the market to make a reversal this week because it's Wednesday. And, uh, you know, it would be a, a, uh, some type of a miracle for the market to reverse what we've made this week and close badly on Friday. And most of the hedge funds and mutual funds do their work over the weekend, and that's why Mondays uh, tend to be such, uh, you know, volatile days. Um, there was something uh, of interest that I think that um, those of you that are interested in trading, um, just recently I saw on a couple of different websites the, uh, the, uh, t the tape by Paul Tudor Jones that was done in 1986 called The Trader, uh, was available. Um, uh, I tried to, you know, to, to see where it was, and it was already gone. Um, but the story behind that tape was, in 1986, uh, Tudor was only 28 years old, and that tape was made to promote him as a money manager. It was like a uh, sales tape. Uh, there were two major problems with it. Uh, uh, the, the main one was, on Sunday night, when he was trading in his uh, uh, Virginia house, if you remember, he had $110 million under management, and he was doing uh, 45 million Deutschmark. So in other words, just about 40% of his uh, portfolio he was uh, putting on a position. And this was on um, Saturday. This was on a Sunday night when when the volatile. And this was this was going back 25 years ago. So you can imagine how thin it was. But it was very very thin at that time, and it was a huge position and it was way over leveraged. That was one of the reasons why the tape was pulled. Uh, the tape was pulled um, right after it came out. Uh, the people that sold me the tape, uh, that was Ed Dobson at Traders Press, the tape sold for $50. Uh, they were uh, trying to buy them back at $100, and I knew when uh, someone tries to buy something back at more of the price and then sold it to them, you don't want to sell it. So I kept that. I eventually converted it into a CD, and I've shown it to hundreds and hundreds of people over the years because it's got some wonderful teaching things in there. Uh, you know, Tudor's a, Tudor is one of the greatest traders ever, and, uh, you know, he really has some great experience. Uh, if you'll remember in that tape, oh, let, me, let me tell you why the tape was pulled. The first one was the fact that he was over leveraged with that British, uh, with the Deutschmark on that Sunday night on Sunday. But the other one was is the... Uh, the uh, talisman of the Bruce Willis tennis shoes. Remember when the position was going bad, he put on his Bruce Willis tennis shoes, and he said these were always good for a two-point rally in bonds and stuff like that. Well, professional money managers and people that put their money with someone, they don't want to have someone, you know, doing something that has related to luck because, you know, he was just being funny, but that's how it came across. So that was the second reason, uh, you know, that the uh, that the tape was uh, that the tape was pulled, and. Um, the, uh, the third reason, uh, I had it written down, and it, it's eluded me. I'll, I'll remember it in just a second. Um, but that, those were the two main reasons. Oh, the, the other one was the, um, the fact that uh, I'm going to regress here a little bit. Um, Tudor is a, is a big, uh, big game hunter. And in 19, I believe it was 1994, uh, he bagged a white rhino, which is not an uh, endangered species. It's just a white rhino in Africa, and it was huge. The, the head was tremendous. Uh, you know, the head weighed well over 1,000 pounds. And he had it mounted, and he wanted to put it in his office in New York, and it was one of these 
a spiral staircases where you went from the 20th to the 21st floor, and they had to have a, a permit to open his office to get the head of the thing in so they could mount it on the wall. Well, during the time where they were waiting for the permit and doing the custom work uh, to get the head in, uh, Tudor Investments had one of the best runs it's ever had, and uh, that head was sitting there waiting to be put up. Well, the head stayed there for five years. They never moved that head because he was a little suspicious, and, uh, you know, that was the, the, the main reason why uh, uh, they did this. Now, if you remember in the tape, uh, I ha well, I know a lot about this because I know some people in the tape, and I think it's, I think it's worth that you understand you know, where some of these things come from. Uh, he talked about the fellow that he worked for uh, in Memphis, uh, the gentleman that, uh, you know, was a sophisticated trader that was never flustered or anything. And that, that trader was Eli Tellus. He was the, the cotton, the greatest cotton trader of all the time. Uh, I know uh, Eli's uh, son, uh, Eli Jr., is a friend of mine. He's a cotton trader also out of New York. And... Um, Eli, Eli at that time was uh, e equivalent to the uh, either Amos Hostetter, who was who was around at that time, and also uh, you know somebody like uh, Warren, um, what was his name, Monroe Trout, and people like that. Some of these people you don't even know who they are, but they are great traders. But anyway, those were the main reasons why that tape was pulled because they didn't want to do that. And most of the most of the things got out, uh, you know, got pulled back. But there were a few of them out there. It never hurt him. Uh, Tudor made his made his mark on uh, October the uh, 19th of 1987. He came in heavily short uh, the the S and P futures. Uh, he was leveraged to the hilt, and he also had long bonds. He was short stocks, long bonds, which was the perfect position to be in. And he made uh, I think 500 million dollars that day. And the person that he took most of his money from was um, George Soros. And so Soros immediately gave. Um, uh, tutor a billion dollars to start trading, and that was the real, the real jumping point for um, Tudor Investments. Uh, he's now 53 years old. He's got four kids. He's married to a, a, a fashion model, has a wonderful life, does a great deal of charity work, and is, is a really nice guy. But as you can imagine, he likes to you know keep a pretty much private life as much as he can. But that's the story behind the tape. If you get a chance to get it. Uh, it's really worth watching. I've seen it a hundred times, and it's got some wonderful uh, teaching things, uh, you know, in there that that are really, uh, you know, really, really important for trading. You know, his main thing that he talks about all the time is never add to a losing position. And and if you stop and think, that's the single most uh, one wise thing you can do in trading. The reason why is not only is your analysis wrong, but you are now are increasing your risk. And you really want to get down to the point where you have less risk than more risk. And that's why adding to losing positions is not a good thing to do. So uh, keep in mind uh, that's very, very important. The um, Okay, let's talk about gaps. Uh, you know, I, I, po I posted into Tiger TV uh, this morning the gaps on uh, IBM. You know, we gapped down from the, the 197 level. Uh, and uh, the market went down for quite a while, and then in one day today, uh, the news is really good, and so it goes up and it fills the gap and goes into the 786 uh, relation uh, uh, ratio. So that's uh, why why that's important. Now uh, we have gaps everywhere, uh, and the, the the main ones, uh, you know, of course, that we're looking at are, are the big gap that we had in the VIX index that has now been pronounced dead by just about everybody in the financial press that it doesn't really count anymore. Uh, there's so much complacency out in the market that uh, haven't seen it quite this. Uh, it's not as bad as it was in, in March of 2000 when the when the NASDAQ was approaching 5,000. That was as bad as it as I've ever seen it. But uh, it's, it's pretty bad out there. There's a lot of people that they have no fear of the market. Why should they? Because, uh, you know, the Fed is coming in. And you know, bailing everybody out with QE2, QE3, QE4, QE5, whatever the QEs are going to be, they're going to raise the debt ceiling. You don't have to worry about that. I don't think there's any any question that uh, they're going to do something, uh, you know, really spectacular there and you know, allow us to have more uh, more debt uh, so that we can pay our bills. You know, they'll just extend our credit cards uh, just like uh, they want to, and that's. Uh, that's the main thing of, of what we're doing. I wanted to show uh, another a set of gaps, uh, and that is in the the Russell um, the Russell index of small caps. 
And if you'll just go back as far as you want to go, go back years on the Russell, is, you know, first when they first start trading it, and you'll see that all of the gaps are filled. And these these gaps that we have now are, are just, uh, you know, they're, they're very large gaps. They're coming at a breakaway level. Uh, we've taken out the highs of 2011, and that really doesn't mean a lot because we did that in 2007. We took out the highs, and the market rolled down from there. I am not saying that, you know, we're starting a big bull market, a big bear market right here. I'm not going to say that because I don't want people throwing fruit and vegetables at me when I walk down the street. I'm thinking that, but I'm not saying that. Uh, this is a very, very bad situation we have with all these gaps on the upside. And this is, I know, I know you folks think that's really good, and everybody in the in the TV shows and in, in the financial press thinks it's really, really good. But if you historically go and look at these things, you'll see that it is not really a good thing because these gaps will be filled. It's just a question of when. And the other thing that we have going here is you've got this tremendous amount of acceleration. In other words, the rate of change, the market's moved up faster and faster during these gaps that started on January 2nd. So even though this thing looks really, really bullish here, uh, just be really careful. Um, you're you're going to come in some morning, and you remember, uh, any market that can give you anything it wants can also take it away. So you've got to remember that there could be something coming in uh, one of these mornings or in the nighttime sometime where a big surprise hits the market and the change in economic thought occurs, and then we'll have the big you know, pullback, and then you'll have a pretty good chance to buy it if you want to be able to look at it. Now, there is, there is a big thing happening today that we're all aware of, and that is uh, the fact that we have uh, Apple is getting ready to come out with uh, with their earnings today. Uh, we've been looking for this stock, you know, to get down to the uh, 395 level around the uh, 20th of, uh, excuse me, around the 28th, the 29th of, uh, of January. And uh, that's, you know, the end, near the end of the month, that would be a perfect A, B equals C, D in price and time. Uh, we, we, we made a bottom uh, about a week ago, a little below $500 a share, and we've rallied a little bit, one, two, three, four, five, six days, and we've rallied about $10 a share. We've got the earnings coming out today. Um, you know, if this, if this isn't really a blockbuster earnings for Apple, then this stock is really going to be in trouble because it's way behind the rest of the market. And... Um, I have been following some of the things on the Internet just to see what the expectations are because this is going to be a market mover, uh, on, you know, no question about it. Uh, and, and if it's really crazy, there's a chance that, you know, you could get, you know, Apple to move um, at, at least, uh, you know, 10% at one time. That's $50 a share. Anyway, we've got a break coming up, uh, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to partner with Great Panther Silver for another exciting silver coin giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Super Silver Giveaway begins the week of January 28th and we'll be choosing 47 lucky winners. It's free to enter with absolutely no strings attached. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com today to fill out your entry form. Every hour that we're on the air, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. the week of January 28th, we'll be randomly choosing one lucky winner that will win a silver coin or bar from Great Panther Silver and TFNN. And the final hour of the week, Friday, February 1st, we'll choose three lucky winners. That's 47 winners in just one week with over $1,000 in silver given away to our loyal listeners. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex symbol GPL or on the Toronto Stock Exchange symbol GPR. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Bob, are you there? Hi, Larry. Yes, I'm here. What can I do for you? Um, well, I've called you before. I've... Um, Traded using your various tech techniques. I've I've read some of your books. I've read uh, H.M. Gartley's book, and I trade for a living. And my here's my the statement I want to make. I was very reluctant to call you because I respect you quite a bit, but you've made statements again and again about the IWM and gaps. And there are gaps in the IWM that have not been filled. Well, Bob, I've looked at that chart a hundred different ways, and I don't see it. Maybe my data is wrong, but I get well, my I data from these signals. Dates. And I don't know what you constitute as a gap. I mean, are we talking about a gap that's 50 cents? Does that constitute a gap? No, I, I want to see a gap on a chart that leaves a big space that I can see. The one that I posted in the Tiger TV, uh, there's three or four of them there. Uh, that a gap means that your uh, all the stocks jumped up above the previous day's highs or lows, and that's what leaves the gap. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand what a gap is, but mm -hmm. you now there are there are periods of time: July fourteenth, two thousand and nine, November twenty fifth, twenty eleven, where there's gaps on the chart that haven't been filled, and I'm using a daily time frame. I don't know if you go back to uh, um, November 16th of 2012, there's a gap on the IWM chart. The high oh. was, and I'm curious of your opinion, the high was 77.68, and the, the low the next day 
with 78.22. So that's certainly the gap, and I remember that because that was the, you the time that of again. the solar eclipse and new moon. But do you consider it, uh, that a gap from that date? As long as there's a space on the chart where there's no, right. uh, you know, bar, it is a gap. In my opinion, right. that means there was no trading done at that time. And so that's okay. I consider that a gap. Okay. All right. But well, I, will, I will double I check my work that, on... Uh, you know, I, uh, look, when people say things on radio programs, I don't I, care if it's CNBC, Bloomberg, whoever the heck it is, people have to go back and do their homework. I mean, maybe a lot of people don't, but I trade for a living, so... You know, when somebody makes a statement, i got to go back and check it out. And there's gaps on that chart that have not been filled. You can take a look at July 14, 2009. Bob, I'm going to look at every – I'm going to go back as far data as I can to check that because I've, I've checked it, and uh, I cannot remember uh, seeing a gap there. I know there's only one gap on the Dow Jones that's not been filled. That's from January 1991. But I did not okay. see any unfilled gaps on the IWM, so okay. I apologize well, I enjoy if I your made program. a mistake. But, uh, regularly, and I just wanted to make that point. I don't think I'm wrong, but maybe okay. I am. I doubt well, it. Well, you know, I, I'm wrong a lot, so I will double check it. I don't think there's any question okay. about that. So take a look at it. I, I will, and I will report this uh, on Monday. I will. I'll have that as one of the feature things about the gap on the IWM because it's important. Look at July fourteenth, two thousand and nine. Okay, that I remember that two thousand and nine on the fourteenth because that was a combust date. I remember because I happened to be in Clearwater, Florida, um, you know, at that time, and uh, I remember that date very big. There was a big report, and there was a huge gap that day, and a lot of different things. Okay. All right, I'll Very take good. a look at that, Bob, and thanks for you. bringing. And I listen, I, and I appreciate your your candidness. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of people try to soft shoe it, but you know, call it like it is. If I make a mistake, and believe me, I make plenty. Uh, hopefully, well, I, I, I correct them as quick as I can. Uh, you know, I do like to know when I when I've made a mistake for sure. But but I just I, I see these gaps, and I say, I gotta call him because I, that's what I see, but. <laughs> Trade what you see. Have a good day. All right, my friend. Thank you. And I will report back this on Monday, okay? Have a good day. I appreciate that. Okay, you bet. That. Thanks a lot for calling in, Bob. Hey, we've got another caller from um, uh, Florida. Al, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. What can I do for you, my friend? What kind of vegetables do you want to throw at me? <laughs> it's okay. Now, if I made a mistake, I'm certainly going to, uh, you know, correct it. Sure, I'm more of a soft shoe kind of guy. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> well, my question is, are you still looking for um, Apple to trade down, I believe it was, what, 394 was the target? 394, yeah, I still am. Uh, uh, the problem is, is these earnings, and, you know, you know, I, I watch what the uh, people are talking about. Al, we've got to take a break here, but I, I would like to go over this with you again because this is really important, I think, for the whole market because Apple is – know such a big component of the nasdaq so stay with us we'll take the break and we'll be right back okay i'll hold there okay Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back uh, with Al from uh, Florida. Al, are you still there? I'm here. And we're talking about Apple? Right. Okay, well, uh, my feeling on Apple is that it, it receives so much press coverage because, you know, this is how they pay the bills at uh, TFNN and all the other places. At, well, not just TFNN, but CNBC and uh, Bloomberg and stuff like that. So they're just throwing stuff out there. Uh, you know, left and right about, you know, margins and all this other stuff. So no matter what the report says, there's probably going to be some, uh, you know, bullish and bearish things in it, unless it's just going to be totally bearish or totally bullish. The trend is down. Um, I wouldn't want to go net long this stock uh, into, into earnings report, uh, and I wouldn't want to go net short. I, I think the, the, uh, the statistics behind it, are that I think about 85% of the time the reports are bullish for uh, Apple's earnings over the past uh, 24, 25 quarters, I heard. I, I, I heard that on um, Bloomberg, as I recall, uh, over the weekend. So you don't want to fade those kind of statistics. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Uh, yeah, and you were um, you mentioned, I think it was February 5th is an important... Uh, February February fifth is a um, is a Bradley date, um, and uh, we're we're in a zone here where there's a whole lot of things happening. That started on the fourteenth of uh, January, where the minor things. The big one was yesterday. That was the uh, a lot of uh, uh, mathematical numbers. And what I mean by that, uh, Al, is that we, we we calculate the highs and lows of major highs and lows on a weekly basis, going back. 
um, well over 100 years, and then we take the Fibonacci relationships of those waves. In other words, a 1.618 in days, a 1.27 in days, and that gives you uh, uh, dates coming out in the future. And then when you have multiple hits, in other words, uh, from January 22nd, you have dates that go back, uh, you know, say 25 years, and you have, you know, like 30 hits where there's some type of relationship on a Fibonacci basis, that tells you that this should be a really key date, and that's what we had on the 22nd of, uh, of January. Well, that's helpful. Well, that, that's why I put the trade on uh, for the trade of the year. I, I would have liked to have said sell on close instead of sell on open. So <laughs> that made that made a big difference, and and it was uh, it was a lot of difference in the uh, attitude that I had at the end of the day because boy, I got some I got some harsh emails from people asking me, you know, why did you pick the uh, the open as opposed to the close? And uh, I the, the only the way I did it was was I just hit my square root button on my calculator. And I decided to hit it three times. And if the number came up odd, the last number came up odd, I was going to do it on the open. And if it came up even, I was going to do it on the close. And it came up, you know, uh, even. So I did it on the, uh, I did it on the, on the open, which was the wrong thing to do. And and it still could be wrong. That's why I've got a stop in there. It's a wide stop for me. Um, you know, fifteen oh seven. That's quite a bit. And, you know, it's really hard to say that there's anything bearish about this market when you look at it. But when you look at all the gaps and you look at the fact that everybody's bullish, and, and I looked at a lot of different things over the weekend, uh, listening to people, you know, what their feelings on the markets were, and everybody is, uh, you know, really bullish. And uh, even the people that are that have been bearish are not as bearish, so... You know, they're they're all leaning the right, uh, leaning one way on the boat. That's for sure. I, I missed the uh, trade of the year. What was the? Um, what Basically, was the trade of the year was to sell the S and P on the opening yesterday. It opened around fourteen eighty two, and I put a stop at uh, at fifteen oh seven. That's a larger stop than I usually use, uh, but it's about one percent on the value of the of the contract itself. Uh, I'm also uh, going to do a trade of the year if the Treasury bonds uh, can rally up into the uh, the 150 level, 152 level one more time. I will be looking to do a, uh, a you know a, a move on the bonds too because that those are major major uh, patterns that are completing, and that that's what I try to base these on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope that helps. That does. When do, do you know when the uh, earnings come out for Apple? Uh, this afternoon, uh, I think for about four thirty. Okay, and do they do uh, overnight trading in Apple uh, when the earnings come out? I'm not even I'm not even aware whether they do that or not because I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I know I know sometimes sure. afterwards they do, but at the time of the uh, at the time of the earnings, I don't know if they do or not. That would be really a bad time, you know, to really uh, you know to look at that. So who knows? <laughs> I don't like to go into earnings. I mean, that's uh, those they play games with those. Things. They play games with everything, but earnings it gives them either a bigger excuse. <laughs> well, and and Friday the um, it stopped. I mean, it uh, closed at exactly five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. What are the what are the chances? Oh yeah, they you know they the the option players they know those games. Uh, they play them better than anybody else. That's why when you do an option. You know, you've got to be able to take profits, you know, before, uh, you know, the time that you think you have to because by the time you want to take them, they're probably not going to be there. You know, that's, right. the, that's the bottom line. That's it. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for calling right. in, Al, and have a wonderful, uh, you know, new year. Okay. Uh, also, I wanted to go back now and talk about our friend Bob that called in and talked to me about uh, the gap that happened on the Russell uh, 2000 uh, back in July on July the 14th of uh, 2009. I remember that uh, very very clearly because that was the first A B C D correction that we had in the uh, market after the bottom that was made on March the 5th. You know, at the end of the world tarp thing when uh, they gave all the money to the banks and bailed everybody out. 
this was the first ABCD correction that we had. It stopped exactly at 382, uh, and it did leave a gap uh, for three days later, and that gap has not been filled. And uh, it's uh, I missed it, but uh, there's certainly a gap. I remember that day very, very clearly, uh, July 14th, because I was in Clearwater uh, visiting um, uh, Tom O'Brien, and um, it, that was combust, where Mercury conjuncts the sun, and there were several other, uh, you know, major aspects that occurred on that day, and uh, that was a big spot. I'm going to search for other uh, gaps on this uh, over the over the years, but there's certainly one going back, uh, you know, four years ago that that I did miss. The thing that we have going now is that you've got so many of them uh, just recently that have, uh, you know, jumped up. You know, you had one on uh, in November uh, the 12th that Bob pointed out. Uh, we had one, another one uh, that occurred. Uh, at the end of uh, November, uh, on the 29th, we had another one, the big one, which was on January uh, the 2nd, and then we had another one uh, last week. And so there's four or five of them, you know, in this breakaway run that makes it, uh, you know, look like uh, there's a whole bunch of gaps that are that are there. But there's one, there's one particular chart that is, uh, and it, I think it's as as important as the uh, the IWM. Uh, if not, if even if not more so, and that is the uh, one for the um, um, the transportation index because we've had so many of them, and we left one today too, which is a that is the uh, fourth one that we've left uh, in the uh, in the Dow Jones transportation. And you're you're not going to find uh, uh, that on the chart. I mean. There, there might be a, a, a gap on the transportation chart somewhere, but you find four of them in a row, and you'll win a prize. I haven't decided what the prize is going to be yet, but you'll certainly win a prize. We've had four uh, major gaps uh, that started, uh, you know, way back uh, in uh, November, right after the solar eclipse and new moon, and uh, they, they're they're very big gaps. I mean, you can see them on the chart. They've got big spaces. Gaps are outlier events. They are, they're almost always filled. And this, this is the problem that, that we have with the market now is that it's run too far too fast. And, you know, maybe this isn't a major top of any kind, but we're going to have a pretty significant pullback because the whole world is bullish, and they just don't let them go through the door at the same time. There's just not enough room. And so uh, be really careful here. I've been saying that for, you know, several days in here, and uh, whether that's going to, you know, uh, come to pass or not, I don't know. But technically speaking, this market is not only is it um, oversold, it's dangerous. Uh, you know, it's, excuse me, overbought. It's dangerous in here because of all these gaps. And that's, that's what's happened with the, uh, with the, VIX, uh, the VIX index is that we've had these uh, – these big gaps also that's showing this tremendous complacency uh, that's in the market, and so these are these are not good things. I mean, they look good, you know, when they're going up, and you know, everything, every, all the the financial pundits are, you know, saying that you know this is it, this is the the beginning of Nirvana, and Camelot is back again, and back again, and and it could be the Camelot is back again, but it'll give us a chance to buy it at a at a better place, especially with these gaps. Prove it to yourself, folks. You know, I, in fact, I, I felt very, very uh, fortunate that Bob called in to call me on that because I, I missed that, and and he did the, he did the work himself, and that's that's really important that people do that. I wish that everybody in Tiger TV and and all the people in the Tiger Room would do their own work, and when when we you know, when we say something on here, because some of the things I say. You know, I, I really believe, and I, I did miss that gap from 2009, but the other stuff I really try to, to say, you know, uh, the, put the research behind it because I'm, you know, I'm on the air, this is recorded, and I don't want to be, you know, made a fool of. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, it's not fun to do, you know. Uh, I think it was, uh, um, I believe it was, uh, what was this guy's name? Um, oh, I can't think of the guy's name. Oh, who wrote the... Somebody help me here. Um, oh, Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, "It's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought of fool than be thought of a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt." And so that's what I, I try not to do is to uh, you know do something that is just totally you know unbelievable on, on some of the things they say. And I I listen to the things. Uh, on Bloomberg and CNBC when I'm listening to a, a show, 
and I hear things that are just totally, absolutely wrong. I mean, they're just, uh, they're, they're, no one's done the research on them at all, and uh, so it's not really, uh, it, it's not really relevant, uh, you know, to that, uh, to that subject matter. But you, you should do the work yourself, and I think that's the one thing that, uh, you know, Bob did that uh, is really important. That, that, that impressed me a great deal, and believe me, I, I certainly appreciate it. I, I don't take it personally when I'm corrected, because believe me, I'm corrected a lot. Uh, I, I had two lovely daughters that had no qualms about, uh, you know, correcting me when I was uh, when I was wrong about something. Now, there, I want to talk a little bit about divergence here. Uh, we have the, uh, the copper market, uh, even though we've had this tremendous move in uh, just about all the indices, uh, have taken out the highs from uh, 2012 and 2011. Uh, you know, the copper market has not even taken out the highs from September of 2013. Now, if if business were really that good and, and they were building as much stuff as they should be doing, I would think that the copper market, you know, would be moving along at a very brisk pace, you know, at least following the, the stock market because this has a very high correlation with the stock market. And if it's not doing that, uh, that's telling us something that that, that is there uh, that you want to be aware of. The NASDAQ has also uh, been lagging the market by, by quite a bit, and I think that uh, if, uh, you know, if unless it starts to pick up, and of course it'll all, be, it'll all depend on Apple today, and I, and I know that's a, a cliche, but a lot of this stuff is a one-stock market because of the fact that it's 23% of what the NASDAQ does. And the NASDAQ has been able to rally up here a little bit, even with, uh, without the help of um, Apple. So if Apple does contribute today, you know, it could easily get the NASDAQ, you know, moving, you know, a lot faster in, in, in the, in, in, so that it would make, a, uh, uh, make up the, the, the room that it's left behind because it just barely went above the, uh, the 61% retracement uh, of the uh, of the previous uh, of the previous move, so um, you know it's still way behind the rest of the market. But you know it'll it'll depend on Apple by a great deal. Okay, I want to bring in uh, one other chart here. It's one of my favorites, and that is the New York Stock Exchange Index chart. Uh, it shows the uh, the big gap that we had on the January the second, and then we had another one uh, that occurred, uh, you know, back on the ninth. Uh, a week later, we had another gap, so we have two gaps uh, that are there. Uh, and here again, you 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 will have a hard time finding um, you know some unfilled gaps in the New York Stock Exchange Index. So um, this is uh, another reason why you've got to be really careful up in here. We've completed uh, an, an ABCD pattern uh, in the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. As a matter of fact, we've completed three of them. And they're right up in this level. We've made new highs uh, from April of 2011. And so that's going to be interesting. We've got to take a little break here. And when we come back, we've got to talk about uh, the gold and silver markets. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got a call from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Max, are you there? Yeah, good morning, Larry. Good, good morning. Can what you, can I do for you, my friend? Can you look at sugar and see if you have any kind of a buy pattern? On sugar, sugar the sweet. I certainly do. Been watching it very closely. Uh, I don't trade it more than a couple times a year, but we're getting close. Uh, there, we're, we're trading it around 1850 uh, a pound right now, but we have several uh, really strong patterns coming in around 1650 uh, a pound, and uh, we're going to wait uh, another few weeks just to see if it's got the possibility uh, of getting down there. If you'll take it uh, a minute when you go into Tiger TV you'll see that there are two very large AB equals CD patterns going back from last March that measure right to that uh, level, just under $17 uh, you know, dollars a pound. So if we yeah. get to that level, that's where I'd be buying sugar. Okay, thank you. You bet, my friend, and Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Okay. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the gold and silver uh, gold has held the uh, you know the 61 percent retracement at 1625. Uh, we've rallied up to the 50 percent retracement. Uh, it, we're still in a downtrend. We're up about nine days in a row, so we're due for a correction uh, any time now in gold. And that correction uh, should should hold the uh, 1650 level. But folks, if we go below 1625, uh, they're going to have to rewrite the book on this because. It's going to go from bullish to bearish. So remember that number in gold at 1625. That's a long trend line that goes back several years. It's a 61% retracement. 
Uh, it's got a lot of things uh, that are there. Now, um, the silver market, you know, which is one-sixth the, the volatility that we have in the, uh, in the gold market, uh, on this last rally, we came off of the 61% retracement at that 2940 uh, level per ounce, and we've made it all the way up to the 61% retracement. Gold can only make it the 50% retracement uh, of the uh, uh, no November highs, but the but silver made the 61%. It's, it's much, uh, much like gold, but it's very, very overbought. And, uh, you know, if it could back off here about a dollar and a half down to 30 50 uh, something like that, I think it would offer uh, a very low uh, buying opportunity. But right now, uh, it's, it, silver and gold are just uh, incredibly overbought. Uh, they've been up for uh, 10 days in a row, uh, either higher highs uh, or uh, closing higher. That's how, you, that's how I determine whether the market is up. And that, that's what it looks like to me. They're both very uh, overbought at this time, but, but I'd be looking to buy uh, on a retracement. They still look bullish uh, longer term and shorter term. As long as these lows from uh, late December hold up well, uh, we've got a chance for silver and gold to go a lot higher. Uh, over the past uh, few times we've been in the uh, uh, talking about it, uh, well, at the end of the show, we've got the commodity market uh, tomorrow. Uh, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.